with the leadership of the Nigerian community, or the Nigerian Christian community under the auspices of the Christian Association of Nigeria. We appreciate your efforts to honor our invitation despite your very busy schedule. First, let me state clearly that the idea of this interaction is to come together to review our understanding of the Nigerian crisis of development and governance and collectively find a lasting solution. As an association of Christian citizens who believe in this country and continue to pray for its unity, peace, and prosperity, who have spent time to review the problems that hinder peace and progress in the country, and hereby make suggestions on how to improve them. We have consulted with Nigerians of diverse religious, ethnic, and social identities on the problems of the country, and the solutions to them have been articulated in the strategic document we call Charter for Future Nigeria. The Charter for Future Nigeria begins with a diagnosis of Nigeria's problem and locates it primarily in an incoherent constitutional and institutional framework that defines governance and social and economic interactions in Nigeria. This incoherence is in the main reason that the country today is almost submerged in the chaos of insecurity, instability, and economic stagnation. The document considers this incoherence in political, social, and economic dimensions. The document makes genuine recommendations for resolving Nigeria's recurrent crisis that borders on justice and fairness, equality of all ethnic and religious groups, equal access to basic economic and social rights, political freedom, and egalitarian and just social order. The overriding concept in this transformation is democratic citizenship, which should be the focus of the governance at all levels in Nigeria in promoting the socioeconomic well-being of every Nigerian citizen, irrespective of religion, ethnicity, or social pedigree. In this interaction, Your Excellency, we will present the high points of this strategic document and listen to your response to the issues they raise. This is a conversation by concerned religious community that desires the best for its country. Our interest is that all candidates clearly understand the concerns of Nigerian Christians and propose policies and programs to address those concerns. We believe that with this kind of respectful and sincere conversation, we will find lasting solutions to these crises. Once again, let me welcome you all to this dialogue and express the warm reception of the leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria to you and your team, Your Excellency. Need us one country, even if it is through the agency of flawed human beings. We believe that God has endowed us with all the natural and human resources we need to achieve the great destiny he has for our great country, Nigeria. What remains is for us to resolve to do the work of justice and peace and to pursue prosperity through diligent, honest, and intelligent leadership. The Christian Association of Nigeria is not interested in looking around for who to blame. We believe that we have to work hard with other Nigerians to find solutions that work. For this reason, Khan has developed a strategic policy document that carefully diagnoses the Nigerian crisis and offers a considered framework for its resolution. It is this document that we present to this delegation to consider as you campaign and prepare for good governance if you win the 2023 presidential election. 
In this presentation, we will highlight some of the strategic issues raised in the document and which forms the position of Christians in Nigeria regarding the future of Nigeria. Um, let me go to the summary sir, of the problems with the Nigerian constitution. Our problem as a nation is mostly constitutional and partly managerial. We have to properly diagnose the constitutional roots of our problem as a people. The founders of an independent Nigeria in 1960 set for themselves and future generations of Nigerians a grand vision of a prosperous and united country founded on justice and equity. Today, that vision has not been realized. Nigeria is a poor and conflict ridden country with neither justice nor equity. Why did our vision fail? Nigeria failed because of incoherence between the vision of justice, prosperity, and unity in diversity, and its institutions and practices of policy, of politics and economy. In place of inclusion, Nigeria instituted and entrenched the politics of exclusion. In place of protection of fundamental rights, Nigeria embraced violations of the rights of its peoples. In place of justice for all, Nigeria practiced privilege for the few. And in place of secular democratic governance, Nigeria promoted theocratic neo-feudal governance. The incoherence of political and economic institutions in Nigeria reflects in the following. A constitutional order that is based on sharing rather than producing and rewards those who consume rather than those who produce, thereby creating no incentive for productivity. A constitutional order that proclaims secularity, but also allows state institutions to promote religion and religious norms that violate the fundamental rights of citizens in public law. A constitutional order that proclaims equal right of citizenship, but also defines citizenship based on ethnicity. A constitutional order that weakens democratic citizenship and promotes aristocracy of ethnic, religious, and social blue bloods. A constitutional order that proclaims that human beings are fundamental, but provides many textual justifications for the state to derogate those rights with the flimsiest of excuses. A constitutional, right, a constitutional order that deprives communities and states of control of their resources and grants those who are not impacted by the explorations of those resources greater benefits. A political economy that is not focused on creating wealth and providing social services to citizens. A political system that centralizes power and decision making and therefore deprives communities of effective participation in managing and improving their lives. A political system that entrenches ethnic and religious domination and promotes impunity and abuse of power. <clears throat> For us, this is uh, uh, the roadmap we're prescribing to constitutional reform by future Nigeria. This constitutional incoherences paint a terrible situation for Nigeria, but Nigeria is redeemable. Nigeria is redeemable. We can rescue the country from a final collapse and restart it on the path of prosperity, stability, and justice. The salvation of Nigeria requires far-reaching actions that strike at the roots of the problem. These actions revolve around the following fundamental changes, in our opinion. A new constitutional order premised on devolution of power, decentralization of authority, and democratic accountability. A constitutional order that proclaims in unmistakable terms enforceable civil and political rights, as well as social and economic rights 
that promotes substantive economic and social welfare for every citizen. This means the incorporation of full citizenship rights for all Nigerians. A constitutional order that abolishes all vestiges of feudalism, ethnocentricism, and ethnic and religious domination in Nigeria by providing the right to self-determination for Nigerian ethnic and cultural groups and incorporating the right of a referendum in the Constitution. A constitutional order that is based on meritocracy and production rather than privilege and consumption. This means a fiscal regime that gives natural resources to communities that bear them who will pay royalties to the federal government. God has blessed every community in Nigeria with abundant resources. Let every community in Nigeria focus on optimizing its resources instead of fighting over sharing of limited resources. An electoral system that truly guarantees that the right of the people to choose their leaders will never be hijacked by the rich and the privileged. This means an electoral management board that can never be under the control of politicians and an electoral process that ensures all votes are counted fairly and freely. Such a system must be free of violence and be open to public scrutiny. An economic system that develops rural communities and eliminates mass poverty through prioritizing investment in health, education, and well-being of citizens and reducing the cost of governance. We believe that these are the minimum constitutional guarantees for a future Nigeria that will be different from the present. We believe that until we undertake these fundamental changes, which many people term restructuring, Nigeria will not recover from the danger of looming state failure. A brief about the managerial roots of our crisis. Uh, beyond constitution to rescue Nigeria from its trip towards state failure, we need to have an urgent managerial intervention. Uh, the leadership failure has compounded the constitutional dysfunction of the Nigerian state. Fixing the constitution may be a longer process and some of the features of a constitutional change are not completely in the control of a president. But there are administrative actions that will help Nigeria recover and restart on the path of development and freedom. The key leadership failure is that Nigerian leadership elites have been reluctant to address the root of the Nigerian crisis. They have rather acted to compound this crisis the new president of Nigeria must start on a different note, sir. He must undertake strategic actions on these three fronts. Number one, nationality and citizenship. Number two, religion and state. Number three, devolution of government function. Policy roadmap for a future Nigeria. For avoidance of doubt, we present the policy that we address a crisis of development in Nigeria. Number one, state police or fully decentralized police authority. Number two, clear and unambiguous religious neutrality of the Nigerian state. Number three, enforcement of fundamental rights of all Nigerians, including economic and social rights. Number four, restructuring to decentralized governance. Number five, equitable and enforceable sharing of executive positions. Number six, ethnic and religious representation in military and security agencies. Number seven, self-determination for all the Nigerian people. Number eight, no to Ruga, yes to Ranchi. Education and free health care to all Nigerians, including the al -Majari. Number 10, no open grazing, rather modernization of animal husbandry. And then 11, local control of local economy, including waters, rivers, and forests. 
In conclusion, sir, the Christian community in Nigeria is worried that Nigeria is slouching towards complete state failure. We are worried that disorientation in public leadership makes this a self-fulfilling prophecy. But we are reassured by the words of the scripture that whenever a people recognize their errors and make amends, the God of justice will show them mercy and the land will be healed. Nigeria, we believe, is not a lost case. There is hope for Nigeria. Nigeria has a great future. But that hope and future rests on, the, on resolving the constitutional incoherence that has determined our bloody past and our miserable present. It threatens to deny us a future. But if we agree to create a new constitutional order on the basis of equality, justice, and self-determination, if we determine to create a new social compact between Nigerians of different religious, ethnic, and social groups, we will recover the promise of a great, peaceful, and prosperous.